We shut our eyes, we stretch out our arms and whirl on a pane of glass. An asphyxiation, a fix on anything. The line of life, the limb of tree, the hands of he, the promise that she is blessed. Take me now, baby, here as I am. Pull me close, try and understand. Desire's hunger is the fire I breathe. Love is a banquet on which we feed. I'm an artist. Rock and roll is my art. And I'm free because I can leap up and scream. I can put my fists up in the air. I don't give a shit. Yeah, and then after you break on through the other side, then you break on through to the other side, and the other side, and the other side. Crowds always reacted incredibly to Patty because she had such a sense of personal charisma and transcendence that you couldn't help but believe what she was singing. <laughs> like the most integrated form of art for me. All the fervor and energy that I put into painting or writing, I put into rock and roll. As long as I'm alive and as long as I'm working, no one is going to be able to like push rock and roll down. I'm very fortunate. I have many ways to express myself, and my responsibility to keep creating and creating is a very uh, optimistic process. To induct Patti Smith into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame from Rage Against the Machine, Zach De La Roca. I read an article recently where the author, some critic, had identified the very moment that the Cultural Revolution died, if you can believe that. According to this guy, the spirit passed in the summer of 1969 when violence broke out at a free Rolling Stones concert at the Altamont Speedway. How such a ridiculous conclusion could be drawn escapes me when you consider that the 70s would produce some of the most revolutionary art that the world would ever see. If there was even a grain of truth to what this guy had to say, somebody forgot to tell Patti Smith. <laughs> By the time Amiri Baraka had released the now infamous poem, It's Nation Time, and Marvin Gaye, two years later, released What's Going On, one of the sparks that set the punk prairie fire had left South Jersey for the Lower East Side of Manhattan. In 1975, with Lenny Kay, Ivan Krall, Richard Soule, and J.D. Dougherty, Patti Smith released Horses. The opening to Gloria might be one of the greatest moments in American music. The piano line and the space within it speaks to us like a dark gospel. 
and then you hear that voice and you think nothing could be this haunting and nothing could be this healing at the same time. And then the words, Jesus died for someone's sins, but not mine. Delivered like someone who left the church that was oppressive America and burned it to the ground. The body of the song becomes a celebration of the outsider and possesses a chaos that only Patty can summon and only she can control. She sings, screams, howls, chants, so attuned to the moment that anticipating the next one is an impossibility. The breath between her words is as powerful as the words themselves. And by the end of the song, a couple of things were made apparent. Punk seeds had been planted, the culture would be changed forever, and it would be hard for me to ever listen to Van Morrison again. <laughs> In 1976, Patty released Radio Ethiopia. The songs, a little more refined, but still daring, and still carry that outsider's dignity. In 1978, she released Easter, where along with Bruce Springsteen co-wrote, she would have her first hit with Because the Night. But Patty's spirit ultimately proved too restless for radio and far too threatening. She seemed far more interested in creating transcendent poetic moments than fashionable hits because she had already carved her legacy in something much deeper. The movement she helped define explained why people like me related more to the bad brains than we did to the eagles, why we championed the clash and hated Ronald Reagan, and why, and why we dropped our textbooks and picked up Sonia Sanchez, Allen Ginsberg, and Langston Hughes. Expanding Rock's boundaries, Patti Smith, the poet, revealed truth regardless of the political and social consequences. Patti once said, I stand in front of a microphone and I'm not afraid. And she remains just that, fearless. Fearless throughout her losses, fearless as a mother, fearless when she put the Bush administration up on the firing line for this illegal war and pulled her poetic trigger. <laughs> fearless in prose and fearless in her life, it is my honor and privilege to induct Patti Smith into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm very proud to be here and I'm really very happy and if it seems like I'm not, it's just that so many people that I love that, would, that are so happy for me have a, a different seat. They're a bit higher up, <laughs> but um, that I know that that my mom and my dad and my brother and, and Fred and so many people that I love are, are with us. And uh, first I would like to thank Clive Davis. <laughs> Clive. When I came to Clive, I was really awkward, arrogant. I couldn't really sing. I had 
pretty uh, clumsy movements. I had a lot of guts, not a whole lot of talent, but he, um, he had faith in me and let me go out of the gate, just a colt, and stayed with me. Thank you, Clive. And I want to thank uh, my present company, Columbia, who's being so kind to me at this time, and the three women who shepherd me all through my years, Jane Friedman, Ina Maybach, and Rosemary Carroll. I want to thank, it's like at the Academy Awards, isn't it? <laughs> I want to thank all of the musicians that I have collaborated with. Rock and roll is a collective, it's a brotherhood. I want to thank my musicians in the 70s, especially the late Richard Soul and Ivan Kral. And in recent years, I would like to thank Oliver Ray and Tom Verlaine. I have a very small crew, probably the smallest crew in rock and roll, but they are very loyal. And uh, through the years, from my late brother Todd Smith, to Yik Wang, to Barry Dorier, God bless you, God bless our crews. We are nothing without our crew. And I would like to thank my family, my the support I get from my beautiful daughter, Jessie, and my son, Jackson, who will be playing with us tonight. And my present band, Tony Shanahan, J.D. Doherty, who has played drums with me since 1975. And my, my good friend and collaborator, but most of all, my good friend and champion, Lenny Kay. Many of you may not know that the Rock and, Hall, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Foundation has a program to aid musicians in need as a, um, as a tax exempt organization. They have the capabilities and the resources to help musicians in need. And so we encourage the Rock and Roll Foundation to help our musicians in need, as well as to encourage us and to give us accolades who are not so in need. Please, let's all help our musicians and musicians in need know that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Foundation exists. Please call upon them. My um, Lastly, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. My late husband, the great Fred Sonic Smith. <laughs> once predicted a long time ago, actually right before he passed away in the end of 94, we had an argument uh, in the kitchen while I was peeling potatoes. And uh, he said to me, Trisha, one day you're going to get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I said, ah, no, I ain't. And he said, uh, yes, you will. And you're not going to like it, or you might feel rebellious, or you might uh, feel guilty because I'm not in it, and I'm clearly the better one. <laughs> And he was. But he asked me, please, to accept it like a lady and not to say any curse words. 
and to make certain to salute new generations because it is the new generation that will redefine the landscape of rock and roll. And together, they have the power, an unprecedented power, to unite and make great changes in our world, to make our world a better place where sometimes we have tried and failed. So I salute the new generations. And I thank everyone who has encouraged me through the years and all the people that come to our concerts and help me when I forget the words, which is all the time. And I accept this wonderful honor in the name of Fred Sonic Smith.
like to uh, thank uh, Bruce Springsteen and Jimmy Iovine for this song. My mom, some, <clears throat> some people um, say, well, that it took a long time for me to get here. I have to say, I never expected to get here, so it seemed like it was just a second. But my mom really, really wanted to be here with you. She loved rock and roll. She loved it so much. She answered my, all my mail for over 25 years. And uh, right before she died, I mean hours before she died, she said to me, Trisha, I said, what, Mommy? She said, did they save the stone pony? <laughs> and I said, Yes, Mommy, 
She said, good. And she said, did you get in the Hall of Fame yet? I said, not yet, Mommy. And she said, oh, I'm not going to make it. But when you do, sing your mother's favorite song, the one, the one I like to vacuum to. So, Mommy, this is for you. Yeah. I haven't fucked much with the past, but I've fucked plenty with the future, and the future is now.
Father's favorite song at the end. I wrote that song in uh, maybe 1977, and uh, uh, the significance of the song, if I can remember that far back, was <clears throat> to take a word that had been used in a de derogatory fashion and redefine it, redefine it as a word for the artist and the outsider. And my idea at that time was in redefining it it would no longer be a derogatory word in terms of anyone's uh, race or persuasion, but be a word of honor for the outside artist. And um, that's why I say inside of the thing, Gandhi was a nigger, Jesus Christ, and my mother too. There are three of my favorite people. So uh, <clears throat> the idea, um, <clears throat> which might seem naive, or uh, idealistic, you know, if you don't, if you don't, um, a lot of great ideas or um, the most beautiful and uh, loving thoughts are from the naive and idealistic. So, you're welcome. <laughs>
I saluted um, my great friend and my guide, Fred Sonic Smith. Uh, Fred is with us in spirit. He wrote this song. He wrote us. He wrote it for us all, and it would be a very proud moment for Fred to know we were all here, gathered together, and uh, well. Have a great night, everybody. Drink plenty of water. Take good care of yourself. You just heard the Stooges, I Want to Be Your Dog, Patti Smith and R.E.M. They're just warming up right now. You see Keith Richards on guitar, members of R.E.M., member of this year's class of inductees at the 2007 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremonies here at the Waldorf Astoria. Let's go to the stage once more for Patti Smith's People Have the Power.
sleeping. Oh, I can miss my dream to you.